Practice question set number 13 starts off with a tough one. Number one says, we have two oppositely charged parallel plates that are separated by 0.2 meters and have an electric field, electric potential difference of 1,200 volts across them. Locations one and two in the regions between the plates are shown below, as you can see in the diagram there. A uh, question says, how much work is required to move an electron from location one to location two? So this is, uh, in a sense, a kind of a combination of a physics 20 problem and a physics 30 problem. We did the concept of work back in physics 20. We said that work is equal to F times D, force times displacement. But we also said in physics 20 that work is equal to delta E, the change in energy. That's called the work energy theorem. Work is equal to the change in energy. Now, we can use either one of these in order to solve this problem. We'll use F times D first, since that's the first one we wrote down. In order to do this, we need to know the force that acts on this particle that is parallel to the displacement. Uh, if you remember physics 20, this force must be parallel to the displacement. If it's not, then we had to tack on a cos theta on the end of it. I don't want to do that. I don't have an angle here, so I need to find a force and a displacement that are parallel to each other. Well, this particle experiences an electric force, an electric force that will be equal to Q times the electric field. That's from the electric field experiencer equation. Remember, E is equal to F over Q. Rearrange it. We get F is equal to Q times E. But we don't know the electric field. So now we're going to solve for the electric field by using the uniform field producer equation. That's the equation that we use to represent the field between parallel plates. E is equal to delta V over delta D. We sub in some numbers for this. We get 1,200 volts is our potential difference. The distance between the plates is 0 0.20 meters. And that gives us an electric field here of... 6,000 volts per meter, or we could say 6,000 newtons per coulomb. We sub that into the F is equal to Q times E equation. We know the charge of the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied by 6,000. And we end up getting a force, an electric force, of 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. Now, that electric force acting on a negatively charged particle in this electric field is going to experience a force this way. Sorry, it's going to experience a force this way. We've got a, no, right the first time. It experiences a force this way. This is a negatively charged plate because it's closest to the negative side of the battery. It's a positively charged plate because it's closest to the positive side of the battery. It gives us an electric field this way, and we know the negative particle experiences a force opposite to the field. So it experiences a force upward. If we want to use an upward force, then we need a displacement that is parallel to that force. 0 0.16 meters is not parallel to that force. We can't use that distance, that displacement, because it's not parallel to the force. Nor can we use the hypotenuse of that triangle, because that's not parallel to the force. The, f the force that we're using is vertical. The displacement that we're using has got to be vertical as well. That means that the displacement that we use in conjunction with this force is going to be the 0 0.16 meters. When we multiply those two numbers together, we end up getting a work of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. So the answer is going to be B. Now, if we tackle it the other way, using W is equal to delta E, we'd recognize that delta E is equal to Q times delta V. From our data sheet, delta V is equal to delta E over Q. Rearrange it. Delta E is equal to Q times V. But we also know that delta E is equal to the work. Now, this one's a quicker one. We know that the charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, charge of the electron. This is the tricky part, though, of this one. The potential difference is not 1,200 volts because it doesn't go all the way across. It only goes 0.16 meters across. Again, this 0 0.06 meters in this hypotenuse is completely irrelevant here. If it only goes 0.16 meters across a 0.2 meter gap, it goes 80% across the potential difference. In other words, instead of going 1,200 volts, it goes 960 volts. That's 80% of 1,200. We multiply those two numbers together, and once again, well, and behold, we get 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. So either way you look at it, using W is equal to F times D, 
or W is equal to delta E, the work energy theorem, we get the same answer, 1.5 times 10 negative 16 joules. Big thing to remember here is that for the first one, for the blue one here, F times D, the force and displacement have to be parallel. Any other displacement doesn't matter. And for the green one here, the Q times delta V, the potential difference that we use has to be the proportion of the potential difference that is the same proportion as the distance that the particles actually traveled. All right, let's take a look at numeric response number one here now. It says an electric potential difference of 285 volts is required to stop a moving alpha particle. The initial kinetic energy of the alpha particle is what? This is like a charged particle. This charged particle is slowing down. This is like a car going up a hill. And if a car goes up a hill, then we're going to say EI is equal to EF, and we're going to start off with kinetic energy. But since we're looking for the initial kinetic energy, I'm not going to sub in 1 half mv squared. I'm just going to say EK. The initial kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, is equal to the final potential QVF. So as a charged particle goes up, sorry, as a car goes up a hill, starts with kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill, has potential energy at the top of the hill, this is a charged particle that has electric potential instead of kinetic energy. So Q is, it's an alpha particle, so it's 3.2 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. The potential difference here is 285 volts. This is really the final potential, 285, but the initial is zero, so 285 works there. Uh, we multiply those together, we get 9.12 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. We're going to express that since we're looking for just the base here, and express that as 9.12. Number two says, as an electron accelerates in an electric field and moves further from the negatively charged plate, what happens to its kinetic energy? Well, as the electron speeds up, its kinetic energy will increase. It means the answer has to be either A or B. Its kinetic energy increases. And uh, why, why does that happen? Well, because the electric potential energy has got to decrease, right? As one goes up, the other head goes down, because the total amount of energy remains the same. Because the work done by the electric force, work is done by electric force. The equation is F times D, the force times the displacement, not the field times the displacement. So the work is done by the electric force. Number three, particle with a mass of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 18 requires this much kinetic energy, 3.00 times 10 to the 5 EV. What's that? Well, that's a unit of energy. It's like joules, except it's different value. The value of that in joules is given to us on our data sheet. If you look on the left-hand side of your data sheet, you'll see that 1 EV is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Again, on the left-hand side of your data sheet. When we do this calculation, we're going to convert this EV to standard units of joules. So we're going to say, just going to set up a little ratio here. 1 EV is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Then 3 times 10 to the 5 EV must be X number of joules. So 1 is to 1.6, as 3 is to x. Take the x up by multiplying, take the 1.6 up by multiplying. We end up getting a value of x to be 4.80 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So there's my energy, my kinetic energy in joules. Now, this is a particle that is speeding up. It's like a car going down a hill. So we're going to say that this car going down a hill starts off with potential, except it's QV potential, not MGH potential, and it ends with kinetic. I don't need to write down the 1 half mv squared equation, though, because I already have the final kinetic energy in joules, 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. We want to find the charge. We've got VI. We've got the, the final kinetic energy. We're going to solve for Q. It works out to be... 4.80 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. So my answer is A for that one. And finally, question number four talks about two uh, parallel plates cause a, an alpha particle. I'm going to underline that in red to remind me that it's not an electron or proton. 
um, causes it to speed up from 1.5 times 10 to the 4 to 5.0 times 10 to the 4. And we want to find the potential difference that's required to do this. So it's, once again, it's like a car going down a hill where we say EI is equal to EF. At the top of the hill, this car is moving, so it starts off with kinetic energy. But it also has potential energy, but it's QV potential, not MGH potential. When it reaches the negative plate, negative charge plate, when it reaches the bottom of the hill, it's going to have kinetic energy, 1 half MBF squared. Sub our numbers in here. Mass of the alpha particle. Uh, times the speed squared, don't forget to square that. Plus the uh, charge of the alpha particle, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, times the initial potential, that's what we're looking for here, right? Really the potential difference, but it's the same as the initial potential. Equals 1 half, once again, the mass of the alpha particle. Times the final speed. And once again, don't forget to square that. Uh, so what I want you to do here is get this number. Get this number. Take this one over to the left, to the right side, by subtracting, and then divide by 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. You're going to get VI. You're going to work out to be 23.6 volts. So the answer for that one is B.